Hello, my name is Danny, and I am a technical marketing manager here at VMware. And what I have for you today is a demo using Cluster Class on AWS. What Cluster Class is, is a collection of templates. Users can reference a Cluster Class and have no need to provide templates or need to have knowledge of the underlying infrastructure to deploy and maintain clusters. The Cluster Class knows how the templates need to look like and only need the information specific to the cluster provided by the user. This makes creating clusters easier for the user due to the smaller learning curve. Users do not need to learn how to create or modify cluster API templates to be efficient at deploying clusters. For the demo, you will need to install some CLI tools. These include JQ, AWS CLI, AWS Cluster API Provider, Cluster Cuddle CLI, and Tanzu CLI. In this demo, I will use Tanzu Kubernetes Grid to set up the management cluster that will run Cluster Class. A quick disclaimer, several of the steps I will show today are not supported on these versions, including using Cluster Cuddle to upgrade and downgrade the Cluster API. And the version of Tanzu Kubernetes Grid shown doesn't support Cluster Class, so don't use any of this in production or a deployment that would be an issue to delete. This demo is for an early look at Cluster Class should you follow along. To get the Tanzu CLI, go to the Tanzu Kubernetes Grid download page on the VMware Customer Connect. Find the VMware Tanzu CLI for your operating system. I will be using Windows Subsystem for Linux, so I downloaded the Linux version. Once the bundle is downloaded, unpack it and install to the user's local bin location. Then run Tanzu init to initialize the CLI. Now configure an AWS user profile for use in deploying the management cluster. Create an environment file like this and use your own information and then source it. Then we are ready to create the CloudFormation stack for a cluster API. Then find the IP of the local machine to use with the Tanzu CLI when creating the management cluster. Because I used WSL, I need Docker Desktop installed with WSL integration enabled. Once the UI is up, connect to it with a browser and follow the wizard. I suggest using the developer mode to save time, but both work. If you run into an issue with the cluster name while deploying, try adding a label. Any label will do. Or remove the cluster label section from the manifest YAML and deploy at the command line. Let the management cluster build and once done, use kubectl to switch to the cluster's context so we can access it. Next is to check and enable the feature gates on the CAPI controller manager. Edit the deployment and change the feature gates to true as needed. Next, install cluster cuddle version 1.2.2 if that hasn't been already done. Next, run the upgrade plan and note the current versions for later. Then upgrade the cluster API. This is not supported, so use a test sandbox that can be deleted if something fails. Once the upgrade is finished, a cluster class can be added. Here is the cluster class manifest, and in the cluster class, several templates are referenced. Also, in the cluster class, the variables the users will use are defined. Then the patches are how the variables are used to change the templates, which are added next. Now a cluster is ready to be created. While the cluster is provisioning, we can look at the manifest and see that what the users need to do is set only what is specific to their cluster and is simplified from how a cluster would be created with the cluster API alone. Using cluster cuddle, we can check if the machines have been deployed yet. We can also watch the AWS console and see the instances deploy. Once the control plane instance is up, we can get the 
cluster kubeconfig and install the Calico for the container network interface. Once the CNI finishes provisioning, the nodes will be in the ready state. Now, if we show the version, we can see the server Kubernetes version is 1.23.3. This is confirmed at the cluster object as well. If we want to update the version, we can update the cluster manifest and the cluster CLI will see this and update the cluster one node at a time. A new control node is created and joined to the cluster before deleting the old node. Checking the machines, we can see which have been updated to 1.23.10. The update has finished on all of the nodes. Upgrading is handled very much the same way. We'll go from 1.23 to Kubernetes 1.24. While the upgrade is in progress, you can watch the status of each of the cluster parts. Another function I want to show is scaling. Once again, go edit the cluster and look for the replica sections for the control plane and the workers. Then save and let the cluster class deploy and scale the cluster. Again, we can use the cluster status from the cube cuddle to monitor the cluster. Switching to the AWS console, we can see the instances increased. And now there are three control plane nodes and two worker nodes. Checking the nodes in Kubernetes, we can see the nodes have been joined. To clean up, delete the cluster using cluster class. Next, downgrade the cluster API. Note downgrading is not supported. The downgrade is so the Tanzu CLI can be used to delete the management cluster for us. After the downgrade is finished, use the Tanzu CLI management cluster delete option to remove the rest. And that is all I have for you today. If you wish to learn more, see the accompanying blog post. Thank you.